Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello, and welcome back to um, a special episode of the Lost Signals. Uh, I don't want to say reviews, television, cinema. We are actually going to discuss um, a documentary. It's on Netflix right now called Disclosure. Um, it's an executive producer. The executive producer is Laverne Cox. Um, I became aware of this. Uh, she was on Trevor, Trevor Noah. And um, just a quick uh, bit of trivia is that um, she made sure that the whole cast and crew uh, of this documentary was made up of transgender uh, men and women because the the that ass of her yeah. because the film is about the depictions of uh, uh, transgender uh, men and women or women and men in um, TV and cinema and uh, how they're viewed um, how they're viewed socially uh, within and without the uh, of the LGBTQIA community. So without further ado, my name is Chris Morgan. I am here with Stephen Ramosi. Hello. Jonathan Ian Manzer. Hey. Scott Thurlow. Cheers. And special guest, a very old friend of mine from college, which is a long time ago, I guess. Um, you may have heard him back when, was it a Dragon Age podcast? Yeah, we did Dragon Age together. That's right. Back before we went to video. Um, yep. From the I, depths of our library. <laughs> Go on. And a very, a very like pro LGBTQIA game as well. Yeah, yep, yeah. We we discussed that in, at at length when we were doing that episode. <laughs> Christ, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trans that character. episode that is in general. But... Characters, gay characters, they got it all. Yep. Go on, Chris. Um. So, I, I guess, uh, I guess I'm going to open up the discussion. Um. Uh, that um, Steph, you're currently are are you tra- have you transitioned completely? Are you in the middle of transitioning? Or um, all right, the reason well, aside the fact that you're like one of my best friends and buddies. <laughs> well, um, why don't I answer that question first before you ramble into another one? Because I know you so well. Yeah, because so, Chris. <laughs> um, I guess you could say I'm in the process of transitioning, right? Because um, I still I still bear my legal name. Um, you know, on official documents and stuff like that. Though, fortunately, I was named, um, my legal name is able to be shortened into uh, a more masculine sounding name. Um, so that's actually really worked to my benefit. Um, so I would say still in the process because still I am still, you know, if you looked at my driver's license, it says I'm a female. Um, if you look at my birth certificate, it says I'm a female. Um, though I live my life out in the world, um, as a male and people that don't, that haven't, that didn't know me before I started to, started to transition, um, only know me as a male. Well, I would say I'm transitioning, I guess. And, and, and part of the reason I remember you saying this, uh, because it's one of those things, um, all right, I'm going to date us. I've known you for 31 years. <laughs> And um, long, Jesus, dude! It was like two, 1989. How long was it when we were in mm-hmm. Disco Briscoe's cla- music class? <laughs> I would come in and knock your music books off your stand because mm-hmm. I was a klutz and probably uh, smoked a bowl before I walked into class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> Some, you know, there's something to be said for consistency. <laughs> I don't want to delve too much into personal stuff because, well, I, I guess it's part and parcel to it. But um, I remember you were saying when we, we went out to dinner and that's when you told me and I was like, well, cool. And you know, what was what you said told me what made you decide to finally go ahead and transition was the fact that when you went to court, you got sick of 
you know, cause you were there in a, in, in a suit and you always had short hair. Well, after college, you always had short hair, um, that you were sick of people waiting for Stephanie to show up in court and you'd be like, dude, I'm here. Yeah. 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 I was, I misgendered multiple times actually on the record, which is great. Cause now that's there for posterity. Um, but also, you know, it was, you know, I have to say a little bit amusing to watch people be very uncomfortable with it. Well, <laughs> in a sense that like, you know, like, what are you going to do if you don't, you know, if I, if I don't laugh about it, what am I going to, I can get angry about it. You know, I could go home and cry about it. Um, so all I could really do is just try to laugh about it. Um, this it happened all the time. So when you tell me stories like that, like you would need to show up in court, and uh, people would say that, like, it never occurred to me that you would react to it any other way than, like, rolling your eyes and, like, chuckling about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, the, the court, court actually was, um, because, what well, I get, I mean, I'm an attorney, um, actually was always one of the easier places. What was more uncomfortable, and I think is probably, uh, from, from my understanding, um, is, is sort of an uncomfortable experience across the board for transgender people is things like bathrooms and locker rooms. Mm. That's where it's a lot harder to, uh, to sort of find the humor in it because sometimes you just want to go take a piss and you're afraid to do it and you don't know where to go. Um, you know, I've had people confront me in locker rooms before. Um, not in the men's, men's, not since I've transitioned, um, more not since I I should say not since I presented much more male than I had than I used to um but you know before I started taking hormones and I would have to use the women's locker room I was you know at the gym that was exceptionally stressful I can't even and that's where I was confronted at least once um I've had people say things around me um you know going into going in just wanting to go take a pee and wondering whether or not somebody was going to call the cops on you. Um, because you know, there's some guy in the women's room, like looking to do some horrible things. It's like, actually, no, I just came in here to take a piss. Mm. Um, I don't like public bathrooms. If I could have waited, I would have. Um, so, so uh, it was always much harder to apply the humor to that part of it. Um, I'm trying to think why. It, I mean, it definitely is. It definitely felt more, uh, more. I guess maybe more invasive in a way. Um, you know, it's it's a basic natural function that we all kind of have to live with, and. Um, Everybody poops. It's yeah. still, <laughs> and still, even the way I look now, you know, and I think I pass pretty well. Um, I really, like, nobody really blinks an eye at me, but still inside, every time I enter the men's room or I enter a men's locker room, I still feel a tremendous amount of anxiety about it. Like, am I going to be outed? Is somebody going to realize that I'm not, you know, you're, what people would consider your normal biological male that I'm this trans transgender male. And if so, is somebody confront me? Is somebody going to say something to me, start a fight? I got the cops going to be called. Am I going to be physically hurt? Like those are things that go through my mind every time I enter a public restroom. And every time I enter, of course, I can't go to the gym now, but every time I would enter the gym locker room as well. And I think that's, I think that's an experience that a lot of transgender people feel. Yeah, man. So, like, I, I wanted to ask you stuff, like, so given all that, like, of course, like, you can speak from, obviously, personal experience, and the rest of us cannot, but so filtered through that, like, I think, um, I felt like disclosure, like, some of the people who spoke upon it did address that, and, like, you know, like, yeah, it's it's such a, a strange, I don't know a word, like, to describe it, like, you have to face that, like, aspect, like, am I going to be like hurt because of who I am over yeah. this? Right. Yeah. And like, and I guess I sort of want maybe transition to it. Maybe E will take over or like back me up. But so you had mentioned like just before, before we started recording, you had said like, you haven't really seen like a lot of the, um, the media depictions that were mentioned 
in the documentary. That's but right. Yeah, the, no, I'm not good at watching movies. But from the <laughs> ones you have seen, like, like, you know, from your perspective, from your like, uh, where you're coming from, what do you think like is the message or like what was your impression upon them? I guess is the question here that I want to ask you. It was really interesting. Like one of the things that one of the things that stood stood out to me. Um, when I watched this was, um, I think it was, I think the show was the L word. Mm -hmm. Even when I identified as, um, as, as a lesbian, um, you know, I, I watched the L word like all good lesbians do. Um, I was never really that much of a fan though. I always thought that, um, oh man, what was the one that came before that? Was the... God, let me think. Yeah, come on, come on, guys, come on. <laughs> I know we know it. Is it Queer as Folk? Yes. Yeah, yes. Queer as Folk. Yes. I always loved Queer as Folk. I thought I thought that was fantastic. I loved that. I was absolutely addicted to that show. I watched all of it. Um, L word didn't really get into it. Um, and but one of the things that struck me when I watched this was so I hadn't been watching it, but so I didn't recently, so I didn't know that they had a trans gender male character on there and that they portrayed the transgender male character as becoming this like really aggressive asshole when he started taking testosterone and i thought that that was that was a really shitty portrayal mm -hmm. of of not only transgender men, but also I think just also like it's like a stereotype of men in general. Also, in general, right? Or to like you know wave the flag for cisgendered white men, but I think that you know that I that idea that like men are aggressive. All men are aggressive because of testosterone. So naturally, if you have a transgender man and you start injecting testosterone in them, they too are just going to become like it's like really aggressive. Like, like, obviously, the consequence, right? And it's like, it's um, oh, black and white on the show. Are you, am I allowed to swear on the show? Because yeah, of oh, course, please. Yeah. You can say, <laughs> fuck, you say whatever fuck you want, man. My voice is going to be hard to edit. So, um, that, that actually, um, you know, like I said, I haven't watched a lot of these, but that particular, that particular, uh, scene really struck me that, and also, um, uh, the boys don't cry, mm -hmm. uh, scene as well. Um, which I think I saw some of that movie. That's the other thing. I may not have seen for the movies that I can say I have seen. I may not have seen all of it. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but I think I saw some of that one. Um, but that's when I watched that scene in the documentary where they showed the rape scene. That was. That was, I don't want to say a trigger because I, I, I don't know. I don't always like that word. But um, it, was, it, was, it was hard to watch. Yeah. I found it very difficult that, to watch and, without the person. I've always feared, right? That's something that also hit really close home to me is worrying about like going into, going into places and being, having somebody call you out as to who you are and being so freaked out about it that they, that they become violent about it. And, um, so that was, that was, that was difficult to watch also. Yeah. I feel like there, there is always this like weird periphery of violence around, um, even just like having discussions about this type of stuff, like talking about trans issues and things like that. And like, that's kind of always on the periphery of like, oh, this is something that you have, like anybody who's, you know, trans or, or, you know, different in any way really has to like think about and like really be, cause diff you know, different othered. Yeah, I guess is a more accurate term, but like has to worry about like constantly and something that like, you know, me and the rest of the guys on this podcast probably don't have to worry about as much. Um, but it's something that's like really like hits me hard when I, when I see it. And, but the other thing, and uh, the other thing is that I think that was interesting that they talked about in the documentary is like, how come this is the only portrayals of, yes. you know, trans life that we get to see? Like, how come you don't get to see happy stories? Like, you know, like mm -hmm. things like that. Um, which I think is another like really good point, right? Like 
I think it's changing a little bit now, but not as much as it should be. Well, if I may, it's fascinating to me because they, they started like um, uh, WB, uh, uh, D- yeah, D.W. Griffith. But throughout history, the idea of men dressing as women uh, as you or a woman dressing as men is used for humor. Uh, also, you go back to Shakespeare; they have plays with well, that. Sorry, and that uh, wasn't even humor. Like that was just like again. No, but it's used as like uh, oh, or the the um, you have uh, uh, the Three Stooges dressing up. Sure. Uh, yeah. And used for humor is, and but it's also used for demasculation of uh, like uh, uh, black men in uh, things. No, but you're absolutely right. But if you look at, in a sense, the '90s, which was fascinating when the transition to that, uh, you have Ace Ventura: Pet Detective, which has one of the most problematic scenes I've, in retrospect, I've ever seen. You have the Jerry Springers and the Maury's uh, bringing on the kind of like almost like sideshow aspects to it, and then. They did uh, all the long orders and SVUs, uh, which uh, uh, back to back, you realize how many times uh, they portray it as They're victims of the week. Like that's the only portrayal that we were shown in the media, at least mainstream. Yeah. So movies. when it went, when it stopped from just being kind of the humorous look uh, to laugh at, if they be, uh, it became a a taboo victimhood to exploit. And uh, that it was actually very problematic to me because I can say that growing up in that era, that's how a lot of my parents' generation and me growing up viewed uh, transgender as the this taboo group on the outside of society, which is not true at all to what I as I grow and learned about that group. Right, but that's so important, like because that's what you're shown because that's what the you know I guess the the in quotes, in the huge quotes, the stable society portrays it as, and therefore all the media just you know, spits it back out and to perpetuate a, a very narrow stereotype. And that's what we were shown a lot, like like a lot of all like the Law and Order stuff and yeah, uh, but, if and Torah. Well, exactly, and like for entire generations, that completely hurts your like actual real life. Yeah, it messes with your fucking under, like thing. not understanding, but like you you just like having being able to talk to people like people being able to talk to people gets completely exactly. fucked up by stuff like that. You know, like just, uh, you know, connecting with somebody on a human level, there becomes this whole other like blockade in between that. And it really like screws up just human interactions a lot, I think. Um, but, it, but until I saw that juxtaposition between, what I was told when I was younger versus how media actually portrayed it. I see where all the fears were born from. And I found that very interesting uh, 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 and I'm very unfortunate as well. Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know. I like, I kind of wanted to go a little bit more into um, like kind of, the well there there were a lot there were a lot of like things about uh first of all like bl- you know black people black transgender people like kind of having a double like d- double uh i don't know i don't even know what the word is like there's two negative. things there's two things that they're trying to you know overcome in life and and they had a lot of like really good uh, discussion about that and you guys talked about it a little bit with uh the dw griffith stuff and like birth of a nation and things like that and his and not the initial the, bullshit judith of something like it was an earlier film even like that but they mentioned it in in disclosure yeah. was, that was scale. like the first cut in film or whatever and it was cut around a, a kind of like a joke like a transgender joke right so i, I don't know i i what do you guys what is what is everybody kind of what what did you get from that from that discussion i guess like i don't know i i i, I went into this where i thought i was going to go somewhere and it turned out that i didn't actually have a question at the end of it i'll say one quick thing like so i think it was laverne who she said something like oh thanks dw like yeah you just perpetuated like stereotypes of it. like sure you're a great filmmaker and you invented the cut but at the same time, you're just perpetuating like prejudice against these the, the population who is within that. So I thought that was like darkly funny. Like I I, I don't want to say it's humorous, but like 
I did chuckle because yeah, because she like she saw through it. She was like, yeah, okay. Should we celebrate him for being a racist piece of shit? But he made like he invented like a cool like or at least an an invention of cinema that has now been used since then. What was framed around? Do you remember? You remember the moment I'm talking about or not? Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Right. So like. I, I, Again, like I thought that was like interesting, like again, like darkly relevant, if that makes sense, like the best phrase I can use to you you guys like so like it was interesting, yeah, and like we of course we've covered DW earlier just in our general episodes, yeah, and yeah, he was a he was a fucking dick ball, like for sure, like a hundred percent, I to tell you, but given that like he did include a, a, a at least a an earlier representation of a transgendered person in his films. Like, while not being but, like the but, best representation, but also it was a active deception, and I think that was something that uh, that throughout this documentary they kind of bring up that That's true. there is Point. a fear of of people being like, "Oh, you were once this, you became this, and you owe me that knowledge that you, that yeah that." But argumentative, no, it's not that they're. Uh, becoming something new, they were always that prior to it, and yeah. that's the. I think that's a very uh, good point. And that that concept, of, I think, you know, Griffin was bringing on that idea that what's hidden behind, and that's not what's mm-hmm. important about the discussion. What was that D.W. Griffith film that we reviewed? Uh, intolerance. Intolerance, of course. Yeah, Which he was arguing that uh, people were being intolerant to him doing Birth of a Nation. Oh boy, um, because <laughs> we had discussed that there was like. Of all the female characters in that mo- in that show, that movie, that piece of shit, um, they're basically they're all vilified except for the one, and she made herself less attractive on the on the uh, uh, women. Um, in, the order to, in order to you know yeah. the onions or something like that, but I mean it's just it, so it, it's it's what was what was interesting to me about this documentary is because the levels of um like in the LGBTQIA community with um uh with Stonewall uh that that the uh that that riot was started by uh black trans women but that has been whitewashed I I had no idea about that until I saw this documentary that that in itself has been whitewashed when it's with the depictions of it later showed you know gay men being the leaders of that. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I That's guess the point to make this on that. Yeah, you know, you're right. Cause like, so to like, sort of like maybe to fill it out, like at least what I uh, extracted from the uh, disclosure is that, yeah, like it does, at least, I guess if you're not a complete DW Griffith asshole, like if you think about it and as it points out, like the depictions of trans people, like throughout at least media have been, very narrow and very stereotypical and like that informs your entire like mindset about this uh, population of people who you probably you might not have been able to access like personally right like yeah luckily we're friends with Steph we can talk to him about your experience right but most people might not be able to do that so if you only are able to consume, but you could be talking to trans people and not even know it because a lot of people talk to me and don't know that I'm a trans because I don't go around introducing myself as a trans person. Exactly right. It's not. Around. It's yeah. not that I don't have any pride in it or anything like that. You know, um, it's just that I just sort of I just sort of want to like live and exist, right? So so like like I would be like, like in the in the community that's referred to being stealth, right? Because I'm sort of like mm-hmm. moving around in like the heteronormative community and like nobody really knows like you know yeah. my big secret so people actually are interacting with transgender people all the time and just have no fucking idea but like you said the only depictions you see on tv are you know were you know in in comedy shows uh you know as like men dressing as women in order to like you know get ahead because right you can't get ahead in business or whatever as a woman like ergo tootsie or mrs doubtfire or something like yeah, that yeah. Some sort of like financial gain or some bullshit you know or or something like you mentioned law and order where or um even like 
like psycho where like transgender people are just like so fucking messed up that we're all like a bunch of fucking serial killers or something mm-hmm. like that. So, so, right. So you got like these two opposites, right. You have these, ex- these like bizarre fucking extremes being shown in the media and people interacting with transgender people probably all the time and having no fucking idea that they are, but really all we are is like going to work and like going to get some takeout and like chilling out like watching like netflix or like playing fucking video games and like going to the beach it's like really it's not that it's not that exciting well the the exploitation of the unknown in a sense has been done forever in uh, a film for uh, nefarious purposes but shouldn't that be the way it is uh that i don't judge you or anyone based on anything but how they want to be presented in the world. It shouldn't matter that uh, whatever the history is there. No. So, yeah. yeah. No, like you said, like, it was a good point. Like, yeah, you're right. Like, you don't go around like, hey, by the way, the number one thing that defines me is that I'm trans. Like, no, that's not it. Like, here's my personality. Here's what I like. You know, here's what I am interested in. That's what defines you as a person, not this one thing that is so narrowly defined. And especially from the, you know, the mainstream Hollywood media, at least, at, for... I, I would say 30 years or more, at least, or however long back the uh, disclosure, like, you know, showed clips from. No, hundreds like, of years yeah, now, if you're talking about uh, you know, Griffith. And I think that's like maybe, like, at least to me, the issue, or at least nobody wants to, to be defined by one singular thing, regardless of whatever that thing is, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, like maybe, like, as our society and mindsets have. I don't know, like, I, I don't know how to describe this or to say it uh, particularly, like, at least progressively evolved is the phrase I might want. Like, yeah, no one ever wants to be pinholed into one certain thing. Like, oh, Ian, you went to jail. You're a fucking felon, right? Like, that's true. That doesn't define you. Like, you no, know I'm saying, like, I'm sorry like, to make, use an example, but that's, it certainly does. it's a similar thing that's been pigeonholed. And, like, it's, it, it seems to me like, it's much worse in a sense because like it's become it's it's the defining trait versus like encapsulating and i think they discuss this in disclosure right like laverne and like and jen and zachary like also said like yeah i might be this thing but i am not completely defined by it like absolutely right i have a range of emotions like any other every other human that exists does so like I think that was like a really good point like and that sort of I think if if audiences who watch this or at least and and or encounter trans people can get beyond their prejudices and like realize at the core of it it that's what it is like we're all just people like we're all just humans trying to fucking exist now maybe like each you might have like a hurdle to it but that's what it comes down to so I thought that was like a really good point that they made or at least tried to um have it come through like that's what it is at the end of the day so i don't know that's my rant i'm sorry to go on but i felt like that was was what i took away Mm -hmm. most impactfully from it so as much as as much as i can't speak for all uh you know white guys and uh ian can't um speak for all people who've been to prison and um you can't speak for all you can't speak for all trans people but um, when I saw Sense Eight, and I was listening to everybody, I was kind of looking up um, Freema. Oh, damn it! What's her name? Uh, she was in Doctor Who. Uh, played the girlfriend of um, uh, Jamie. Uh, I cannot remember her character's name, so I'm going to say the actress's name is uh, Jamie Clayton. Um, Nomi was the character in Sense Eight. Nomi Sense8. and yeah. um, Freema. I can't I remember uh, Freema Agumon, I believe. Yeah. Sure, her, her character's name, but I, I really, honest to God, never occurred to me that, um, you know, that her, that Jamie Clayton, um, was trans, was a trans woman. When it comes to media portrayals, is it something where playing a female role and the fact that the actress is trans doesn't have to mean that the character is trans? It's not um, one and the same, I guess, is what yeah, we're trying to get. Right? Thing is, is, it it, is the goal. I mean, just from your perspective as one person's perspective, like the me, the media betrayal, is it something you want to get to the point where it's just like, that's not even an issue. 
we're going to cast this guy in the guy role and it doesn't matter if he was born biologically or not he's a guy or she's a woman and this person's an actor and you know is that the i mean this is one the only reason i'm bringing this up is because it's something that crosses my mind when i look at this that is it something where we the goal is that we don't want it to ever be an issue from here on out i think that i think it depends on 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 the to some extent on the film itself, right? Because recently there was um, a thing uh, in the media about Halle Berry being cast as a trans man in something. And uh, it like blew up on Twitter or something yes. like that. I remember and, hearing a bit about it, but, yeah. And she apologized and withdrew from the role, which I think was appropriate, right? Because that kind of goes back to what what the documentary was saying before, right? Where having like a, a woman that you know, right? Like dress, like play a trans man it sort of emphasizes at least right now that stereotype that trans men and trans women are really just playing dress up, right? And yeah. it's, it's, it's more yeah. than that, right? It's, it goes a lot deeper than that. And so I think Holly Berry did the right thing right there when she did pull out because, because again, like I said, I, I think that sort of emphasizes that stereotype and that was what Disclosure talked about a lot too. Though, you know, I think if, I think if the film is just portraying, is not paying attention, like not highlight the story or whatever isn't highlighting transgenderness or something like that or that's not a key component of it and it's really just like oh well we need a male for this role we need a female for this role then i don't think it should matter right i you know but i think if i think at least now anyway right we're sort of we're, you know society is still i think sort of adjusting and learning and maybe sort of like coming up yeah. like you know to some sort of base level of human humanitarianism that uh, that I think is important that we don't right now emphasize those those stereotypes of trans people or just people who are well they're just playing dress up right I just go you know it's like saying like well I just go shopping for men's clothes because I look just like play dress up as a man it's like actually no that's not it no. you know when I was eight I felt like I was playing dress up as a girl so um, that. Yeah, yeah. I th that's that's an extremely good point. And I guess I'll just add on like awesome points, Steph. And I guess as critics, like just as of art and, and specifically like film and TV and so forth, like just get the best person for the job, regardless of what it is, I, I suppose, right? Like, you know, well, like, I think I think I think the idea, right, is like when the day comes that it's as easy for a trans person to get a job as it is for any like, you know, cis white guy to get a job You're right then right. then that's the then that'll be the case but until that day like let trans people play trans people right like it there there are enough trans actors out there to fill those roles for sure what's interesting is the the still perception like uh, they had the one uh woman on there who uh character was uh, uh, tr uh playing trans woman and they deepened her voice because yeah. it, uh, her, her natural voice her, like, didn't uh, yeah. match the perception of what uh, Hollywood wanted for that. Yeah, that, that's some dirty shit. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, that, that sort of like, I was like, wow. I mean, it surprised me that Hollywood did that. Yeah. Well, I'm like, like it, that happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. If you're good, if you're a good actor, which I, I, would, I would say at this point, it was like general neutral. Like, if you can act well and you can fill the role, it shouldn't matter at all whether or not you're, you know, whatever it is. Like, I don't know. And that's, that was just a stereotype. That was just the studio feeling like they needed to do some sort of stereotype bullshit. But yeah, you're right. Like, in Hollywood, like, they, make sure they, that everybody understood, right, that yeah. this was a trans person and not an actual woman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she is going to talk like she's a baritone. Yeah, like, they, they had to, like, play into, like, the stereotypes, like, to be like, okay, audiences, like, Make sure you understand, like this was happening. But like that, I think I feel like we should be moving beyond that, or at least maybe we're working towards that step. Like I don't know, like what's the goal? Yeah. Like in theory, right? Like, let's yeah. hope we are. Yeah, we can only hope. Yeah, 
But yeah, I mean, that's, it would be nice if that were the case, I suppose. We that's, I mean, it, it seems like it seems like that's the case a little bit more and more. Like as time goes on, you see more. Um, yep. I I forget who it was who was like in the in the documentary it was like, holy shit, where where are all these kids doing? Like, where are all these kids come from? And like it was like more and more the, all the time, and um, you know, hopefully that's the case when you when you can get to the point where there's like. Yeah, man. a level of exposure or like, you know, some sort of level of like equilibrium, not only in terms of, uh, you know, movies and movie stars, but also as they were saying in the documentary, like with people general, that are just yeah. living their lives, you know, like exactly. when, That's when that point. reaches a level of equilibrium and, and you can say that they're, you know, that, that in ratio, like, trans people are getting as many parts as you know cis people or or you know cis height het, you know white dudes then then you can start to say all right well it's not a big deal that jeffrey tambor gets a gets a fucking part in something well it is because he's a scumbag but like outside of that and that's um, the case. but like you know like until that happens i completely understand the concept of like why are you giving this part to somebody who hasn't lived this life, who ha- literally has to act just to get into their gender role or like their, you know, into, into whatever they want to the portray, like, for. you know, portray themselves as it's, it's like there are, there are people that live this life that know more about this, that can, that can understand this role deep, more deeply than, than, you know, whatever actor that you're getting, you know, off, you know, um, who was not part of that? Yeah, program. exactly. Like G- Jared Leto or whatever off the off the assembly line, who's going to come to the Oscars and full beard, you know, like uh, after playing trans women. Like I think that was the whole thing. It was like he comes and like he presents this like very manly, like masculine person at an award show, perhaps like or seemingly just to present as man a masculine. After playing a after playing a uh, a tra- transgender woman, yeah, you can ascribe intent to people. That's true. That's true. I mean, uh, maybe that wasn't the case, but either way, uh, that's how it came off to people in the that were talking in the documentary. No, and like, of course, you, you definitely can't ascri- ascribe intent, but you can say that this is how it was perceived, uh, seen by people of of the community that he was portraying. And I think that's there's something you said for that, you know? Yeah. No. Absolutely. For sure. So anyway, well, I I have one last thing that I want to talk about, and I think it was one of the most universal aspects of the documentary. Uh, I uh, Jen, I think her uh, her name was, was talking about. Uh, she was seeing a father stand up uh, for uh, his child uh, transitioning, and she was saying that like I wish that my father had stood up in that sense, and I think that everyone can feel that uh of like <laughs> here's how the world should be versus how the world is mm. and i think no matter who you are unless you have, even if you, you had the best parents in the world you have something where you're like i i saw someone else who went through the struggle i went through uh and they had a more supportive crowd around me and it, it very much touched me uh that he level of humanity in there part. yeah i agree uh, uh, I, uh, my eyes watered a little bit at her description of it. Uh, so I wanted to just mention that I thought that, that, that was my highlight of the work. Yeah, I agree. I, mean, I, I second think that. I yeah, still like, have like tear lines. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. intense. Like, yeah, yeah, you're describing it. Like, again, like, Hold on. Hold on. Not, sorry, Hold on. We're, we're sorry Steph, remote. what were you saying? No, I was just saying that, I mean, I, that, you know, sort of made me almost cry as well. I normally don't during movies except like at the end of Lord of the Rings right where, <laughs> sure uh, <laughs> but who doesn't it says no one bows no one bows to you right <laughs> doesn't cry there um, <laughs> but yeah you know I mean again right I mean I'm just I, I feel very fortunate um, and that I you know I have very supportive family very supportive family members you know because there um, there's a lot of homelessness in the transgender uh, in the transgender community. I mean, kids are thrown out of houses. They're disowned from their families. They're thrown into, um, into, into the care of the state because their parents just basically abandoned them because they don't approve of 
who they are. Yeah. Um, suicide, the suicide rate for transgender people is significantly higher um, than it is for heterosexual people. Um, it's an extremely stressful situation to go through and then to have, and then to feel like you're abandoned by your family and your, who you perceive were your loved ones. Um, just, you know, compounds this, compounds what is already like, right? Like a very difficult situation. It's not like you Absolutely. wake up one day and you're like, you know what? This is who I am. No, it, it, it takes, you know, years. It took me years. And it was a long and winding road, you know? Um, as Chris said, we've known each other for 31 years. 31 years ago, things were a lot different than they are now. You know, um, I didn't know of any transgender people when I met Chris Morgan, you know, in, in County College. I, I really didn't even really, really know any gay people. Um, so, uh, you know, we've, we've come a long way. Um, there's still a long way to go. Um, but, yeah, that part was really touching because, you know, to have that to have that support and backing what is a really, really difficult, difficult, difficult decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's critical. It's critical. It really is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess I'll say like to build on all that, just to cap it off, like the positivity that um, the last, I guess maybe half hour of the film or like documentary, like contained, I think that, of course I'm supportive. It's a good thing. Right. Like you said, like, yeah, it's a very difficult thing to go through a decision to make or not even a decision, like just a difficult um, thing to deal with, with, like you said, maybe your family like cuts you off. Like that's fucking super harsh. And if that's the case, like you, you know, like you, the support there needs to be better. And I think this uh, documentary uh, disclosure did a pretty good job, a damn good job, in fact, of you know, giving the positive messages, the positive spin upon it. Like, listen, if you're in this situation, if, if this is who you are, listen, there's support here for you. There's, there's love here for you. And that's a good thing. And that will, in theory, hopefully, you know, m make it more manageable for those who are going through it and, and those who are supporting them as well. Like, give them also, like, a sort of, like, a bump up, if you will, like, yeah, just support everyone who's doing that, and that way we can have a better portrayal of it in general and have better films, in, for, hopefully, I guess. And what they said about the media really is true, right? Because, like, when I, like, 31 years ago, like, when I met, met Chris Morgan, there really wasn't any, there was no positive portrayal of Yeah, like, exactly, or, right? Or even gay people. I mean, that was before Ellen. You remember the stir that Ellen made? <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly. Yes, of course. Yeah, that was. Right. Cool. I mean, Steph, I'm I'm dating the both of us because we're mm -hmm. hanging out with some. I'm fine. But we grew up in the Reagan administration, and then we had the George H. W. Bush administration when we met. No, you know, and Reagan was Reagan. Uh, <laughs> um, but the the thing is, it's it's like you know there was a whole stereo. I mean there's a whole stereotype with regard to AIDS and um, gay men, especially, you know, I mean, there's that whole thing where it, it comes up a lot, like the Eddie Murphy skit where he's just like, Oh yeah, my wife's got gay friends and she kisses him and she comes home with the AIDS on his lips. And, you know, and, and it's like, you're not, it's just like, I have AIDS. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm not homosexual. Doctor says, sure. You're not homosexual. I mean, that was the world like mm. we spent our adolescence in. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I mean, come on, you know, adolescence sucks for pretty much everyone. Regardless. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, this is, this is, this is what's in the, this is what's in the media. This is the betrayal. And then of course we have Tootsie, which, you know, and, um, what are you know, Chris, sorry, you know, Chris and I, you agree. Tootsie fucking sucks as a movie. Like regardless <laughs> of any of anything else, it's terrible. Oh, sorry, discussion for the time. Sorry to interrupt you. No, I mean, you're welcome on the. You're welcome to join us for the Tootsie <laughs> word. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They yeah. tear that apart um, because it, it's it's one of these things where. It, all right, I'm gonna say 
y'all know me. I cry probably more than all of you. Uh, it doesn't really take a lot. And the last couple of films we've been doing have been like PTSD, soldiers, daddy issues. You know, I've been pretty much trying not to cry on this thing a lot. Um, so, putting, sorry, you're putting it through the ringer. Like, I apologize for this, Chris, but you've been like emotionally abused by us because of the reviews we had to do. So, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah but Some that, rough that, movies that's cool. for sure. That's cool. I, I embrace the fact that I'm emotional and I cry. And the reason I'm, uh, the reason, one of the things that brought up um, in this in this documentary was, you know, you know, not just the transphobia and the homophobia, but um, misogyny and the racism because you had something like you know i mean i don't want to veer off this but you have the whole whitewashing thing where you've got <clears throat> you've got these woke actresses like you know you know um like scarlett johansson and um Road. fury and i can't remember Charlize 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 Charlize. Charlize. They, both played, they both played um characters that were uh meant for japanese actors and last year uh scarlett johansson was cast as a trans woman and she put out some stupid tweet like i should be allowed to you know, I'm an actress. I should be allowed to portray anything. And my first thought was, A, you know, you are a, a privileged actor, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And B, wait till you hit 40, what roles are going to be available to you? Yeah, yeah that's, right? I think that's a better point. Like, that's a harsh, like, that's a whole other discussion, but I think no, it's no, valid. But, but my whole point is, the, the whole point I, that I really got that I think that they addressed really well in this is, the subdivision, because there's always got to be another in our society. We live in a society of the other, but it's 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 fascinating to me. And as I said before, with um, you know, kind of like the, even the whitewashing of um, Stonewall was the fact that in these communities, you in the media and so forth, there is this. Um, they try to keep everybody in fighting, for lack of a better word. Um, you say if you're a black gay man or a a gay uh black gay woman you know you're fighting the the female stereotype you're fighting the uh being a non-white you know and as a trans person it's it, it kind of feels like it's what i got from the documentary is everything seems to be compounded it's just like um in our media I, I guess i'm just pontificating here um you definitely are and I apologize. Yeah, I, I really am. But no, but the, the whole point is that, and this is the strength of the documentary is that it makes, it makes me think of all these other things. In addition to, you know, the betrayal of, uh, trans the people. core EDM. issue. Yeah, sure. Steph, so you're giving me that look like, dude. <laughs> I, I was really, really focusing hard. We <laughs> all give him that look, dude. <laughs> the question is, though. Yeah. Was one. I don't know where I know where I was going with it. I was, guess I was just listing a bunch of observations. I, I could I could maybe just like just like like top that off by saying that because I was talking about Ellen and and things the way they were thirty years ago when we first met that I think they are, you know, though there's still issues. I think they are getting better, right? At least there's awareness now. I would say that thirty years ago when we met, there was no awareness whatsoever within the media at all. Yeah. Right. Uh, it was basically, to me, it was, uh, you know, especially watching this documentary, you know, back in 1989, it seemed like it really was any that different than 1959 to some extent, right? In some ways. Um, but I think there's awareness now. And um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And um, hopefully with that, with that awareness, you know, will come more... I don't know, empathy and, and compassion and understanding. Um, Cause that's really about all you can ask for. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a good way to cap it off. Like, I think that's what the documentary like is about really like, yo, ways and awareness, like having more exposure and like without, you know, uh, going beyond the, the narrow stereotypical depictions of, of this community of, of these, of this demographic that's been done previously. And yeah, like you said, Steph, hopefully that will uh, in, endeavor and uh, more more empathy and therefore like just make our society better and perhaps our art better, at least for better depiction. So, yeah, you said it well. I, I didn't say it as quite well, but I'm trying to recap it. And that's all. Who's the, who's the recap? Who's the recap? Yeah, <laughs> that's all I've got. You said it in less than five minutes, like you know. So that's your, yeah. Your I tried to condense Chris's ramble, <laughs> in a sense. Well, I, I mean, I've been I, doing that for thirty years. I, <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> it's difficult to do that. I know. I know. You know probably more than I do. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of wise words in a lot of in a in a whole lot more other words wrapped up in Chris's ramblings. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I think that is going to be a good, <laughs> a good synopsis. <laughs> The one thing I want to I want to um, cap off on, I mean, because obviously I'm going to keep this open to anybody who has anything else to say. You know, that's not me. But something that's come up um, a lot in a uh, couple things I've watched is the acknowledgement of privilege. When you're not a member of a community, in order to be, let's say, an ally, one has to acknowledge one's privilege. But to a point where all of a sudden you don't want it to make it about you, but also be like, you know, hey. I'm speaking, you know, my voice as a heterosexual white suburban male. Um, I am an approved Judeo-Christian religion and a, and a million dollar annual income from being the man. You know, when when somebody... You think a million dollars? No, if, if I had... Is that your dollars, annual income? Jesus Christ, Christ, Chris. A million dollars, this would be a bet. This would be enough. Yeah, Chris, we should have much better podcasting have equipment. A lot better podcast. <laughs> I'd take you all with me. No, that's what you're doing. Um, uh-huh. But um, no, but what I'm saying, you brought up something about the acknowledgement of privilege, and they did. <clears throat> at, at what point is is acknowledging your privilege to be an ally versus to, to the point where like, hey, all of a sudden you're making this about yourself, which I've just made it out myself, and I apologize. He's <laughs> with his own point. <laughs> that's... that's um... Uh, that's, that's, uh, okay. So let me just try to unpack that. Um, so in terms of acknowledging privilege, right? Right. So that's, right. That's right. That's like trying to, that to me, that's in some ways tied to empathy, right? It's being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And, but it actually goes even farther than that, right? It's realizing the things that, maybe have been made easier for you that um, aren't easy for someone else. Like, right. Like, so I can't, I can't, of course, can't speak to any sort of like, you know, racial, um, like racial, like, uh, you know, I'm not African American. Right. So I can't speak to that kind of racism, but what I can say is like, like an example that is like the bathroom, right? Like you don't think twice, about walking into the men's room. None of you do, right? And I don't think I'm being too presumptuous about that. I'm terrified of public restrooms. Aside from that, right? Aside from like, you know, the grossness and and the the whatever, right? But, you know, walk into, you're not walking into a men's room and thinking, God, I hope people don't think I don't belong in here. Hmm. Right? So like, that's, that's, right? That's an example. That's a good example of privilege, right? Because it's something that you do, Right? that you it's it's right you don't think twice about it it's not something that you have to think think about it just happens you know that nobody's you're going to walk in and nobody's going to question you right i live with the fear that somebody's going to question me that somebody's going to you know what i'm saying yeah. like yeah. Right. that's right so there's an example of like privilege right so it 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 takes it takes some thought right it takes it really takes I think what, what what society is beginning to maybe like wake up to now, and and I consider myself as part of this as well, right? Because like I'm not a person of color, so there's all kinds of privilege that I'm checking as well, right? And I transitioned right to a white male, which is like 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 the most privileged of all, right? <laughs> um, so I think that at at this like. It it takes you got you got it takes looking looking a lot closer, right? I th- I think that prior to like the Black Lives Matter movement like really taking off again, right? Because we had Black Lives Matter movement before, um, but it's sort of really certainly yeah. now even more so, right? And which has sort of awoken all of us, right? Or a lot of us, maybe not enough of us right, to sort of look at these sort of like everyday experiences that we have that we take for granted, right, you know, and, 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 and that there are really examples of privilege that, that, that we, we as 
white as Caucasians, as white people experience that, maybe African Americans, Latinos, and other people of color don't. And it's the same thing with sort of transgender people and and cis people, right? There are some things that, like using a restroom, that cis people, cisgendered people, just never consider, right? Never it consider. Have to be a problem, it never yeah. crosses your mind, but. Even as as a gay person, as when I identified as 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 a, as a you know a masculine presenting woman, um, and even now as a transgender person, like that is like that's just it's just with me all the time. That that concern, that fear, um, that uncertainty, right? So privilege goes, I think, a bit deeper than I think people realized. Yeah. Um, and in terms of being, the other part of your question had to do with being an ally. And I think just for being, I think, and this is just my personal opinion, right? I do not speak for all trans people, like, at all. I just speak from, from myself and from my own experiences. But for me, you know, to me, being an ally is just treating you as you are. You know, I, I don't, like I said, I don't go around proclaiming myself as a trans person. I don't deny, I wouldn't, I don't deny it, you know, but it's not. It's not the number one thing that like, you know. No, like, it's yeah. not, it's not something, I don't introduce myself that way. I don't introduce myself professionally that way. I don't introduce myself to, you know, people in social situations that way either. Um, and I think being an ally is just sort of like going along with that, right? Um, it's just, it's just sort of being treating, you know, just people as people. Yeah, That's being exactly. an ally, really, you know. Aside from like signing petitions for rights and stuff like that, right? Which of course we always ask everybody to do, right? As we're all fighting for like equal health care and and whatnot. Um, but I think being an ally is is a lot just being just being there for people as 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 friends and fellow human beings and just being compassionate and understanding me like hey like you know i i know you're going through this um if there's anything i can do just let me know yeah. you know i think right. that's i think that's really the best to me that's like the best ally you can be aside from signing petitions and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it goes hand in hand oh, but yeah, <laughs> <In both>. yeah. <laughs> but yeah i think i mean steph that's really well said i don't think I, I cannot follow that up. I'm not going to try, but yeah, I think that's really what it is. It comes down to. Synopsis. What'd you say? You're not going to do a synopsis of what I just said? <laughs> no, because I think I would do it in injustice because you said it better than I possibly ever could. <laughs> yeah, but I but yo, know, the core of it I, certainly is like absolutely valid and as relevant. I think that's what we should strive for. So that's what we should all do. So <laughs> anyone, you know, no, no, he said people are people. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm going to issue a disclaimer for all my babbling is the fact that because of, <laughs> because I've known you for 31 years and because I've known Amanda for 33 years is that none of these things have ever occurred to me and crossed my mind. And as somebody who, when I saw uh, Laverne Cox on uh, Trevor Noah, I was, I immediately was like, I need to see this documentary. And the part of me that's actually professional about this, uh, actually to look at, to, to be part of here and just look at you and be like, dude, that's stuff, dude. That's the person I've always known. Um, and then all of a sudden have to host a show, which always scares the shit out of me anyway, but also have to ask questions where I'm pulling myself out of my experiences where I actually have to pull myself out of asking you questions that, you know, would naturally maybe be a side question in a discussion about like 800 different things like on Thanksgiving or something, anytime we're together, which isn't as often as, as probably either one of us like. Um, so I'm, my disclaimer was if I, if I um, seem critical or if I seem rambling, it's for me, I'm trying to pull out of not really noticing these things and trying to actually take notice of them. If that makes sense. Sure. Does that make sense? We can respect you for that. Yes, it's certainly, a, my friend. Still looking at me like the. Uh -huh. it, it, it makes sense as much as you always make sense. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That's the look that 
we you're, are all giving you your heart. Your heart's in the right place. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, I sometimes have to pull out and try to be objective, and it's, it's you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. All right. Does anybody else have I to? I think that might be a good place to stop, yes. I think that's what I think that's what Ian's hand motion was. It was very <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It up. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> I'm glad you picked up on that. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to shut up right now, and I am going to say. Uh, <laughs> wait, laughing. I'm trying to wrap the show up. Here. Go on. Stop laughing. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. Um, you know, so I highly recommend uh, Disclosure. I think it's um, empirically a, a very excellent documentary. Um, and I think it brings up a lot of things to discuss. I have Chris Morgan. I have been here with Stephen Armosi. Have a good night. Jonathan Neumanzer. You all look human to me, but I hate humans. Fair enough. Scott. We are human after all. And one of my best and oldest and dearest friends who I used to knock the music books off of uh, in class. <laughs> Steph, thank you so much, man, for being on the show. Yeah, man, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or Mott's?